so welcome everybody to a different kind of video today and this is basically just to test the GoPro out which is attached to my backpack strap because we're going on holiday in a week's time and we're going to do some some vlogging in and around Lorette de Moor so I said to Vicky we'll come out over this weekend with a GoPro stuck like I said on the back strap and we'll have a walk around our neck of the woods here in Haslinden so what you're seeing now is just that a walk through Haslinden not sure if it's going to be a continuous recording or not it probably will be edited down at some point but it's just to get a feel for it and how how the footage will look when when we get back home and we've just walked up Charles Lane this is what I call one of the older sides of Haslinden and there's a lot of history there's a lot of uh, stories that we've covered from this direction and I've just picked up a, a screw <laughs> stuck into the bottom of my trainer anyway we'll carry on up Charles Lane and this gets to the steeper side now and this is a burning up legs isn't it So as you can see guys, we are hands free with the old GoPro today. Well, like I said, I've never, we've never attached the GoPro to the backpack before. So it is all trial and error for this video. And whether or not this video goes up on YouTube, obviously you guys are watching it, it has gone up on YouTube. But otherwise I'm just talking to myself. Now just here, on our right, in this direction here, there used to be an old Methodist church. Now I wasn't around, or I can't remember it being here at the time, but one thing that's always fascinated me is this. This used to be some kind of gateway, I would presume, into the actual, either the grounds of the church, or a cellar of some kind because you can see the top it's like, it's like it's been backfilled but I've always been curious as to what that is or was but as you can see from the top of Charles Lane it does get a lot older looking This is the part now which it gets you by the uh, calves, doesn't it? <laughs> this is the proper burning part of it on the legs, the muscles. Where the other church used to be on our right there, isn't it, Vic? Right? 
Now the sun's coming out, which is good to see. It's got a bit overcast, didn't it, earlier? But at least now the sun is out. It was a bit quieter now this time of morning. It does actually. Well, I said this time of morning, it is now 20 to 12 in the in the mid-morning. So you're going in the shop now? Yes. While we're here. So this is what we, well, this is what I would call central Haslinden now. And again, a lot of history and a lot of stories in this area alone. Got plenty of old buildings, old pubs, especially. But I think many of the pubs are slowly going now, aren't they? Well, that one's going to turn into a <laughs> Yeah, the commercial hotel being turned into, what was it? Hostel, that's it. And I think one or two of the locals in Aslinden aren't too keen on the idea, the prospects of it, are they? Yeah. Especially it's um, shop owners. Cross over here. I think it's a hair and beauty place, isn't it? Yeah. I think it is. Yeah. It used to be the bank, didn't it? Yeah. In that west. We're crossing over here? Yeah. Famous Sissy Greens. Very expensive, but well worth the money. Aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, calories wise, not so good. Keep back well, yeah. Let's leave the passion behind you. I'll put okay, that bottle. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Bye bye. We went up. So you got straps, got your suitcases, got your eye dye. He's really nice, I like him. He's always one of the friendlier members of Aslinden, isn't he? Always has time to chat. Well, that's what I mean, you know, when you say go in cherry, I mean, if you want to go in cherry shops, you can turn it off. Oh, Rosedale Hospice, yeah. Do you want to go that way? Should we go down past? What's that, Mark? Do you want to go that way? Yeah. So, one of my first jobs was working in there, weren't it? Bingo. When it was the Empire Bingo Hall. And one of my first jobs when I left school. Started off as a, as a collector, is that the word, for, for the 20p's that they used to put in the machines. Changing pound coins for the 20p's, and then I got put into the bar. I was there, what, a year, 18 months I'd say. 
But that's when we used to have part-time jobs, isn't it? After school, yeah. after you know, after work, after school, after work, I should say. Um, but like I said, I did eight, or eight hours, nine hours. We did eight hours, nine hours, that thing, eh? Now the sound right in place, simple there. Eh? Then used to walk all the way up here and uh, start work. There's a veterans community building there. Again, full of history around this area. Haslinder, when you think about it, it does have a lot of a lot of interesting buildings and a lot, it does have a lot of interesting history. Don't want to get a sandwich while we're here. I don't. I've eaten this one though. So you can get some back. Nah, I'm alright. I've got some more now. Oh, fine. All this to our right's changed, hasn't it? These used to be old terraced houses. All of them went many years ago. No, this, this isn't Westview. Westview's got oh, behind us. Aye? Which one's this one called? I always forget the name of this side. Okay. Well, look at that. That used to be the old school there, to our left. Yeah, and they reckon, they reckon underneath here is basements, massive basements under here. And a lot, eh? Yeah, it's the old um, sign. You know when the school was built? Yeah. And this stone was laid by Sir William Mather, 1902. So all this used to be a school. The old school muse. But yeah, underneath the foot here, apparently there is all cellars basements. I mean some stories have it that I didn't know there was a grave there, a headstone. Yeah, some stories have it that when the ruffians of Aslandun were nabbed by the police for doing whatever they were doing wrong use some of the basements just underfoot there because the police station that was further back was too tiny you know the cells yeah. don't know how true that is to be honest but This used to be the old, this used to be cinema here as well, didn't they? Where all these foliage is now in trees, because they knocked it down, didn't it? It used to be like a, a furniture place. Furniture and one of the best chippies in Oslo, I don't know if it's still there. That used to be a good chippy, didn't it? Now the only problem I'm having so far with this camera is every time I turn my head to the left, I'm banging it with my chin. <laughs> but as of now, I think it's still recording. Is the light still on? Yeah. yeah. there on the left there used to be a building there yeah. that's what I like when you go to Spain 
the birds in the morning. I know it sounds really bizarre, but these little things, because you do have them here. Yeah. But when you're at home, in your own country, it's a different ambience, isn't it? But yeah, it, when we wake up in Spain in a week's time, and you can hear that, it's different, isn't it? It's even the smell as well. That yeah. Smells, yeah. Yeah, the smells of being in a different country. The ambient noises, even the loud noises, you know, like such as the mopeds that drive along. But they leave that that diesel smell, that petrol smell behind, don't they? And it, I know it sounds really bizarre, but when you when you smell it and when you hear it, and you're in a different, relaxed environment, and I think like you said, you've always said, and for people maybe listening to this side of the story, Vic has always said that, and especially for a woman going on holiday. There's a different vibe to it all because, um, like you said, you don't have the housework to do, do you? You don't have to worry about the washing, the, the chores, general day-to-day -day chores, not having to worry about what to make for tea. I know we all like, do our bits, but obviously women do more, and I will say that around the house. So it does make a difference, doesn't it? I'm just having a week of having to worry about nothing. I don't think it's bad. Yeah, you do, you do. Do you want to go down the back and round and down? This, this hill? Oh, I do go straight down. Straight down. We'll go straight down. Yeah, now we've always laughed, and I don't mean in a sarcastic way, but out of all the houses here on this stretch of the road just across here, you've got the one that stands out, which is blue. Um, it's a bit, it's a bit odd when you consider how all the other houses are natural stone looking. And we do have stories of this area just here, of young children being found drowned in the old mill reservoirs that used to be here. And um, we do have at least two stories of of that occurring in the 1900s. But um, we might cover that at a, at a later date. But yeah, two, two kiddies in different um, separate stories. They went missing from the homes and they found their poor lifeless souls floating in, in the uh, reservoirs. But the reservoirs were only small, they were like ponds. But it was the excess water from the mills, which in them days, it was quite warm. In fact, it was boiling, it was hot. So a lot of the children were badly scalded. And that's how, obviously, other, as well as drowning, but it was the scolding that ultimately killed them. So, two stories there. Now, the only difficulty I think we're going to have, if we ever do any other videos, with the GoPro on the shoulder, I'm not quite sure how the audio's coming through because at the moment I'm just using the GoPro mics. So obviously, because this is a bit of a dry run, a bit of a test, we're not sure how the quality's going to be or what it's going to be like. And now I'm talking, I'm trying to talk louder because there's a guy further down with a leaf blower. And again, I'm not sure if it's going to be too loud for the GoPro. I may have to buy a lavalier mic maybe so it's connected up and closer to my to my mouth and hopefully obviously a lavalier mic will also it might put out a lot of the background noises as well but again it's all tested isn't it yeah i mean if the video like because you said if you do a talk over but well, i mean that is loud from where we are so there's a good chance the gopro now isn't going to be picking my voice up but this is why I'm talking a lot more at this point 
because I want to test out all the different levels of noise, background noise. But this is the wonderful Haslingdon, for those who don't know this area. And like I said, we're doing a bit of a walkthrough. See you outside, Vic. Now we're crossing over a road here, which leads onto what is called Beach Drive, which is just in that direction. And me and Vicky could tell you plenty of stories about that area, but I don't think we will. Well, me and Vicky used to babysit for a, a nice couple many, many years ago when we were first uh, dating, is that the word? Dating, courting. We used to babysit for a couple up there, you see. And that's before, way before we were married. I'm sure people just like to make noise for, for noise sake. I mean, there's a guy with a leaf blower just literally blowing leaves off the, off the public path onto the road, which are only going to get blown back onto the path when cars pass. So a bit of a pointless exercise if you ask me, but now this is a different kind of background noise now. So I'm hoping the mic's picking this up better, but the levels, the noise levels have dropped now, haven't they? Yes. It's more of an ambient noise now, so. Oh. Yeah, you're going to pick up the odd car coming through. So this video, guys, may not be the most exciting you'll ever watch on YouTube. And like I said, it's debatable whether or not I'm going to upload this or not. And if I do, like I said, oh. it's a test, it's a dry run for what hopefully we might do when we go to Lorette in the morning, a week's time. So if people want to give us a thumbs down for this one, by all means give us a thumbs down. Doesn't affect us, doesn't affect the channel in any way whatsoever. Hey, it's still what means it's it is. Interactive. Yeah, exactly. I mean when people leave negatives or thumbs down, what what people fail to see is, or fail to understand is, even by giving us a thumbs down or any channel a, a thumbs down on the video, it's interaction. And YouTube, that interaction counts and it pushes the video out even more. So for all you people out there who dislike a video. Yeah, the yeah, yeah. Not for, just talking about work. No, 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 I mean, we get it. We, 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 we've got our friendly neighborhood dislike who does it on every single video. Anyway, we're gonna make our way into Tesco, so I'll probably turn the GoPro off when we're walking through Tesco. No point me having that on record. And I think Tesco, the staff here can be a little bit uh, obnoxious at times. Yeah, but remember when uh, we had the pandemic and we tried to buy, were it two four litre bottles? Oh, and he stopped us at the actual checkout saying, yo, you can't take that many. But you could take it in two litres. So, so basically, I could take four two litre bottles, no problem, but I couldn't take two four litre bottles. Yeah, if you went out of the shop and came back in. Yeah, I could do that. So this is Tesco. Now, this is the former land where I think it's it Sykeside Mill used to be. One of the oldest mills in Haslandon, or Borderline Helmshaw as I call it. But now we've got a Tesco, and I have to say, one of the best developments in recent memory here, isn't it? Because it's a lifesaver, let's be honest. Tesco's expensive, but it's a lifesaver. Oh yeah, I mean, when people say to us, tell us what your thoughts are, guys, but when people say to us, shop local, yeah, you can shop local. Now, Vicky, as an example, went to our local co-op where we've just been in Aslindon for some of these Dairy League dunkers. Last week. Last week it was. And how much did you pay? Two pound. Two ninety nine for a pack. And in yeah, normal no, shop, it's one seventy five. Yeah, Aldi one seventy five. So you, you, you're talking well over a pound saving. So when people say shop local, I'm sorry. You it's shop. Like, you shop don't you where where it's more beneficial to to your budget. I mean, by all means, I would have shop local if you could afford it, but... Yeah, but my argument would be to it as well, right? Is Tesco not local? Yeah, probably. <laughs> but they are still more expensive, but... Although not in, not in everything. Right, up. 
let's be honest, you, hear, you see a lot of um, Aldi price matching here now. Yeah, but what we're saying is, though, you could argue, so this is local, shopping local. Yeah. But well, I think people generally mean, mean like shop your little shop. corner stores, not the corner shops. So I'm going to turn the camera off for you now, guys, because I'm not going to walk through Tesco with this recording. And just like that, we're out to Tesco. Right, so we're going to make our way slowly home. I've just done some, uh, some checking off the GoPro battery. Because what I've started to do, a little hack for, for those who may be starting out with GoPros, but a little hack, there's two ways you can do this when it comes to saving battery power. Right, right. Yeah, so there's, there's two things you can do, isn't there? You can buy a dedicated light selfie stick with a battery charger built in. So you obviously you charge the selfie stick before you go anywhere and then you attach your GoPro to it and that can last an extra five, six, seven hours. So you don't have to keep changing the GoPro battery. Or you can do what I've just done today, a power bank, which I charged up last night and I've had it attached to the GoPro directly with the lead, the USB-C lead, and it's still a 98% power is the GoPro. So it's charging as we're recording. And the power bank again lasts between five and six hours. So there's two ways you can uh, keep your batteries charged with GoPros. Because the one thing that I will say about GoPro batteries is, and I'll wait till this wind's die down. We'll go this way. So as I was saying, the GoPro batteries are extremely poor when it comes to battery life. Because how, how often have we been out of here, and within 20 minutes or half an hour, I've had to change the battery over, haven't I? Yeah. And the GoPros, are, they're absolutely crap for the way you do that. So, so I always think it's better it's to have, like I say, an external power supply. I mean, you can spend a good five minutes changing the battery on a GoPro because of the casing. I mean, some do all the casing to get into it, to screw the GoPro back together. And it can be an absolute ball it to do. I just wish the GoPros would design their builds a lot better. You know, so you can like press a quick button, battery release, job done. But yeah, GoPros, absolutely poor for it, for battery changing. Now one thing um, people will have noticed on the channel last, well I'd say last three weeks, is we've not done any live streams. And there's nothing sinister behind it. It literally is simply because we've had a couple of people who we've interviewed for our Unknown World feature on the channel. 
and they've always clashed with a Friday or a Saturday evening and then videos will be coming up over the next couple of months uh, so there's nothing sinister behind it and next weekend we are up very early Saturday morning to catch the plane to Spain so again that's another Friday and obviously Saturday where there'll be no live stream and also the following Friday or Saturday because we'll still be in Spain on the Friday we don't get on to Saturday is it Saturday morning or Saturday afternoon so but we will we will get back on on board with the live streams probably start again what would you say June sometime in, sometime in June we'll start the live streams no now there's a tail coming up here behind this old pub the Rose and Crown pub on our right there used to be um, some bigger houses around the back because that lane is called Tower View well, or the road is called Tower View Road I think there's a sign at the bottom is there yeah so where that chap is over at road that's Tower View Road and there is a story of a haunted house just behind the Rose and Crown pub now the Rose and Crown pub has been there for well over 100 years and again I keep saying it but there's a lot of stories that revolve around that establishment but the haunted house or supposedly haunted house no longer exists that was bulldozed many 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 years ago and um, apparently from all accounts the owners that used to live there the family that lived there were reporting strange sightings strange sounds coming from several different parts of the, the building itself but like I said, the reason why we've never touched upon that story is simply because there's nothing there now. I think it's just a little bit of a car park for the local residents. There's nothing else there to uh, to see. And like I said, the story itself, you don't really see much in any local newspapers from that period. It's just a little snippet here and there. But this area where we're going down to now, this is a local park where we used to uh, knock her out as kids. We used to play football here a lot. We're gonna do a story on the actual development of this, this park, weren't we? Talking about how it went from just being, well, not wasteland, but just being land in general, and how it was developed, redeveloped by the Victorians, the clock tower, the gates, the bowling, green itself because that's got a good history to it but it's one of those guys where I think are people going to be interested in stuff like that but I suppose Vic it's like anything isn't it until you put the video out there you never know if people are going to be interested do you yeah I mean that's a woman who says I've got money everybody move out the way god that's overgrown Vic we used to play golf here when we were kids. God, when we were 11, 12, we used to bring our little golf clubs down. We used to play golf in here. No, that used to be all flat land, all like freshly cut grass. Like, it used to be really low cut, didn't it? Yeah, oh, it's the same woman. But yeah. Yeah, she's got money. Don't care about anybody else. Right. Oh, and she slammed the door. Mm. She's obviously in the side of the road. Yeah. I know I can hear shouting. Yeah, she's definitely had a bust up with a fella. Now, this bit I've always liked, ever since I was a kid. This has never changed, has it? No. This has never changed. The only thing that has changed, I should say, actually, is on the left, these houses. Because yeah. there used to be mounds, hills here, didn't there? Mm -hmm. But this actual, this actually back, oh, what do you call it, a cinder path? This old cinder path? Yeah. This has always been here. And I dare say that all these railings these wrought iron railings, these are original features, probably dating back to the mid 1800s or late 1800s. And you take it for granted. I know I'm going to bore people, but this is what I love about this, these parks, all these gates, all these fences. 
these will be original and you just take it for granted thing is though things were built to last back then weren't they The park's empty. Few, but you want to cut through this way? Do you want to go that way? Go that way. This way? That way. This way? No, pathway. Pathway. We've got pathway. We can see, guys, what Some I mean. Point. All these will be original, original gates, Victorian. No, Vic is just saying this park, when we were kids, this park will be heaving on a day like today, a Saturday, midday, just turned 12 o'clock, near 1 o'clock. This park will be heaving when we were kids. We'd be playing football, wouldn't we? Mm -hmm. We'd be on the on the swings. We'd be causing havoc, running across the bowling green, doing what kids do and getting shouted at by all the pensioners. Quite rightly as well, I must admit. You know, when you look back, when you you are a kid. You were disrespectful of that, yeah. Well, we were only young. We were probably ten, nine, ten, and towards it was a beautiful flat bit of land. Yeah. And we used to, we sometimes would take the football on and get shouted at. I mean, I get it. I understand it, when you get older you get wiser. I'd bollock our kids if our kids were doing it. I hope to God they wouldn't do it at the ages of 26 and 27, like, but... <laughs> well, I'm just saying. But the bowling green is just to our right, just there. Behind the little hut. But again, I, I would do a video on the development of this area, you know, on the clock tower, the tank, there's supposed to be a tank buried alongside the clock tower. That is just an urban legend, I must admit. People think there's a tank buried there, but there isn't. There was a tank there, and we do have photographs of a tank being placed there during the wartime effort. But it was, uh, apparently from all accounts, it was actually stripped down and the metal was reused, but some people seem to think that the tank itself was buried because it was too big to, uh, to dismantle and to move. So they buried it in situ. But again, that's just an urban legend. Now this bypass, the A56, when we were kids, this was just all woodland. All this was just woodland. And we used to go off, climb down through the trees and up through to the side. And again, this was going to be part of our story of the park, the development of the park, all this area. Uh, because further round, if you follow the actual A56 round, and Vicky will back me up, it cuts through a place called Cars Industrial Estate. And when they were redeveloping this area, I mean, how, how many bottles of it would you say we, we could uncover? Oh, yeah. Not just 10, 20, 50, 100, there were thousands, wasn't there? There was literally thousands of Victorian bottles that we discovered as kids. Now, obviously, I didn't know Vicky back then. I was probably only, what, 12, 13, 14 at the time. I just started high school. So that I've been yeah. So, but we were, we, we were climbing down onto the old mounds of soil that the, the contractors had dug up, and we found literally tens, hundreds, if not thousands of bottles, Victorian bottles, and some of them still had like the medicines in, you know, half filled bottles. You know what I mean? It was really strange, but looking back, and it made me, me interested in Victorian culture and all that, obviously if I'd have been my age and they'd done it, I'd have been collecting them left, right and centre. But because I was a kid, we were just throwing them and smashing them. I mean, you think how much history that we, we destroyed just by doing that as being kids. But as you can see now, this is the park itself. Looks very spacious and pretty much empty, but you do have the old clock tower. I don't think GoPro will pick it up anyway. But you have the clock tower just on our right, just in that direction. A lot of dog walkers use this, obviously, for exercising the dogs, as well as themselves. But the old bandstand, there's a bandstand on our right as well, further up there, through the, the tree line. That bandstand isn't the original one. The original one was somewhere where I think the bypass is now, the A56. So it was, it would have been round somewhere, well, somewhere in this area, the old bandstand. And again, we do have photographs of that, but a lot of people seem to think it's the one that's past the clock tower and all that inside. Again, there's a lot of interesting features in this park, even though it doesn't look it. 
and then you've got the old Victorian water fountain and this always disappoints me don't know about you Vic the fact that you've got this old historical Victorian water feature here this water fountain and it's just been left to, to ruin for many years I don't think I've ever seen anything remotely original as in the taps the water flowing or anything like that on that it's just been left left to ruin like I said but yeah that is one of the, the, the first features here of the park and it's a shame it is a shame because that is to me it's iconic it makes this park what it is and I don't think I've mentioned the park name. this is actually Victoria Park the sign there Victoria Park clock tower is just behind it but this is Victoria Park and like I said if people are interested and you're watching this video and you've got to this point we will do a full story on this, this park itself um, and all the protests, all the meetings, the history, how it was all built, why it was built, who funded it. We will do a video on it. It doesn't have to be that long, but this, this is an important part of, of Haslindon and you could argue the neighbouring village of Helmshore. Right, so we're going to go across the bypass bridge and this bypass bridge also wasn't here when we were young kids. The roads used to dip down and then back up. Uh, but all this was obviously built to accommodate the bypass, the A56. Cross over at this point. Right. So just below us is the A56. I'll just stop in a minute and show you guys. So this is the A56. And this, this section gets very busy, doesn't it? It's very, very busy. And just in the distance where I am now pointing, just over in that direction, that is where Cobb Castle is. And that's where we've done many stories. Well, like I said, this, this bypass bridge never used to be here and the road, from, all, from what I can remember, used to dip down and then go back up on itself. And I remember one year when I was going to Hasland and High School in that direction, we used to come this way, didn't we? And I think, if I remember rightly, the buzz that were on came down the hill and got stuck roughly where that red car is. As the road goes up, the road goes quite steep, doesn't it? But it was an icy morning, a very cold icy morning. And we were stuck on the buzz and the buzz actually had to, well, I don't know if it reversed down or skidded down, but it actually stopped in the dip of this road and we all had to get off and walk the rest of the way. Now, you know what it's like as kids, walking's an effort, and the school is literally a two minute walk from there, isn't it? Yeah. It's not even five minutes. But obviously when you're a kid and you have to walk up a nice hill, back in the day, you weren't best pleased. Now, where we're going now is Jubilee Road. Yeah, we're not, we're not, we're not far from home. Another 20 minutes walk. Um, got a little bit more of a journey to go yet, but like I said, this was just more of a, a walk around some parts of Aslinden, testing out the GoPro on the shoulder strap. Again, if it's gone up on YouTube and you guys liked it, don't forget to give us a big thumbs up. Don't forget to comment down below. Um, like I said, this will not be the best video you will ever see on YouTube. If you don't like it, that's fine. It doesn't affect us whatsoever. Um, but I just thought we'd, uh, we'd give the GoPro out. Uh, well, give, 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 the, give the GoPro out, Vic. We'll give the GoPro a run out and uh, see what the quality is like. Like I said, there'll probably be a bit more music placed over this more than us rambling and wittering on. So we're going to end it. But like I said, don't forget to give us a big thumbs up if, uh, if, if you are watching it and you do enjoy this, this video. But in the meantime, guys, take care and look after yourselves.